All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. We are done week three of the War Within, and we've got a lot to talk about today. The race to World First has its top three. We're going to talk about some of the challenges with current dungeon tuning and in class design, specifically around the classes that I play. We're going to talk about the raid a little bit because we've got a significant progress this week, and then we're just going to go over some of the other things we did on our mains on the death knight this shouldn't be a very long video because really i heavily focused on playing the death knight this week it was really my primary focus to get up to doing 10 keys so i did a ton of keys again this week i did over 20 keys most really weren't successful unfortunately and that is just the reality of it they continue to be depleted keys but they are finished so just before we jump more into the death knight i first of all want to say congratulations to the top three teams for finishing nurabar palace race to world first we have liquid in first echo in second and method was right on their heels killing queen answer act just a couple hours after echo they were right there so i think we've got some really strong contenders going into season two and i'm super excited to see what type of players we're going to get out of this and really that thing that i want to touch on is the tuning of not only all of the dungeons, but the classes as well. So I can't really speak to all of the tanks, of course, right? But I have watched videos of other players playing different tanks and kind of how they feel. Overall, I've been playing the Death Knight quite a bit. Now, like I said earlier, that I've been depleting most keys. I am not timing keys. On the weekend, on last Sunday during the stream, we ran a total of 15 keys. Seven of them were finished and only two of them were timed. And the two that we timed were nine missed keys. So it's really frustrating. And like, you kind of wonder why is that happening? Is the class really weak that I'm playing? I honestly think it's some of the tuning in the dungeons. It swings far too high and far too low. For example, you look at a dungeon like Arakara. It's a very easy, straightforward key on my Blood Death and I can I go in there and I can two chest the nine, no problem. However, in some of those keys, there's outliers, right? You look at Mist, it is technically a really easy key. There's nothing challenging about Mist. However, one of the pulls in Mist, if you walk into the double guardian packs, even with defensive was rolling, they hit so incredibly hard that even after rolling through all of my defensives, by the end of that, if those guardians are still alive, I, I have to kite and run, but those slashes still hit me from a distance. So I really think Blizzard needs to take a look at this and do a pass across the tuning i can't imagine how challenging a 12 or higher would be with the 20 percent increased health and damage affix like i really don't think that is something that we need the other challenge i find is that even though we're running a lot of these keys deaths are a part of the dungeon especially when you're pugging deaths are a normal thing you're going to experience having 10 deaths in a key in the pug world is actually kind of normal you know there's probably a wipe here or like two people die here three people die there the tank dies so you lose someone else before before you get b res stuff like that happens in pugs all the time kicks don't don't happen so it's not uncommon to get 10 deaths in the key however now because of the tight timers on some of these keys 10 deaths is two and a half minutes lost immediately and all of these dungeons are just hold w and keep going forward there's really no unique routing or any of that which in a sense isn't a bad thing there's lots of complaints for from tanks that there's too many routes to know if you're not doing the mdi route people complain and that is true as a tank i've experienced that if you don't do the mdi route that somebody else wants you to do you're crashed and you get called a bad tank etc and it doesn't make for a fun experience so yeah i understand the whole w thing i'm not complaining about that I'm looking at dungeons like necrotic wake the fact that the third boss still requires all of the spears and it hits like a truck i remember doing that key at a seven early on on my dk it was, it was about 605 eye level so stitch flesh with the creation would hit me for a total of 4.2 million a sec meaning in two seconds my entire health pool is gone that is an insane amount of damage for a third boss while the rest of them are pretty smooth sailing until you get there you look at bosses like in siege of morales i'm so glad they made the changes they did because it has made it a little more doable but there's so many bugs still with overlapping mechanics you get the raider pulling you in and then the commander will charge you at the same time apparently they fixed that in the most recent patch but there's bugs of spotters running out into the water so the melee can't hit them there's ads that just clip through the floor magically i've had that happen a few times and then on the last boss the oblivion affix you still have orbs going through the actual water to get to the tentacles because if they spawn and you kill the two tentacles they sit in the water when you attack the next spawn they then go across the water into it so really frustrating stuff like that is extremely frustrating you look at dawnbreaker most of that dungeon's fairly easy i did a nine dawnbreaker on my death knight as blood and i flew into the pack by the house and as soon as i land i was dead that pack alone the main ad in that pack does five million melee damage and the two ad beside it do a total of 4.4 .4 roughly melee damage as well so combine that it's a nine million plus hit my health pool is only eight was only eight 
1.9 million at the time and this is the frustration i have one of the biggest complaints last season was that it was all based around one shot mechanics there's really no challenge to it it was can you survive this one mechanic yes or no pass or fail that was it and now that's really what it's like for tanks going into some of these mobs you look at the grim Batol pack just before the last boss it is devastating i've gone in with icebound fortitude and dancing rune weapon into the double pack and still purgatory it almost died or i will instantly die stuff like that is not fun and it's fr frustrating and i think blizzard really needs to do a full pass of every dungeon and tune some of the ads that are dealing significantly more damage than everything else in the dungeon i don't think mini bosses in a dungeon should have longer fights because their health pool is so high than the actual boss in the dungeon and dawnbreaker is very guilty of that the mini bosses you do in each section actually last longer than the second boss itself or just as long i don't think that should ever be a thing in a dungeon the boss should always last longer because it's a boss not the mini ad now i've been in pugs where you do a six and immediately there's one white people leave they don't say anything they just instantly leave and these are six keys that i've seen and i've seen in sevens eights nines etc and that's the frustrating thing right now out of the 50 keys that i've ran i have about a 20 percent success rate if i'm lucky so something i might doing is i might start actually keeping track of everything so i can outline like hey here's here's the comp i had here's what happened did we finish it did we deplete it did we upgrade it did we disband etc i'm hoping gear improves this like i really hope that as we start getting more gear things start stop hitting as much but at 618 on my death night i'm getting demolished just completely demolished by ads in these dungeons tyrannical isn't too bad you can survive most stuff there however city of threads the first boss the subjugate if you're not ready with the defensives it destroys you it just completely melts my health pool it's insane and then people are like oh the third boss is really challenging the third boss was easier from a dps tank perspective but the healer sweating the whole time right so these are some of the things i hope to see improve now that's in regards to the dungeons let's talk about the class tuning so like i said i've played my dk quite a bit but this week i was like hey i'm gonna try another tank i want to have an alt so what i decided to do is start working on my warrior my warrior is 585 i was going into seven keys with my warrior at 585 the whole time and doing the same pulls on my dk and having no challenges whatsoever at 605 my dk was struggling surviving some of the pulls that my warrior would do at 585 so i really think blizzard needs to take a look at that and maybe some tanks need a significant boost in armor parry dodge something that will help them survive or better mitigation because right now the death knight's biggest problem is you walk into a pack with nothing you're dead and it takes about three globals before you have enough bone shield charges and runic power to, to death strike to survive so my warrior no problem at all i can go into every pack had earth shield up every pack had spell shield up and then i could just ignore pain like crazy like if warrior had no challenges doing keys it was a night and day difference i can only imagine how powerful the warrior is going to be when he gets up to 610 item level because right now at 585 it was an absolute joke running seven keys compared to what i had to experience on the de death knight now i'm kind of thinking that because of that i want to try my druid my paladin and even my dh and see how the how those tanks compare as i'm getting gear and work my way up so you may see a little bit, bit of that over the week so that's just kind of my take on the dungeon tuning and the class tuning now i'm not saying this is a oh my god this sucks scenario 15 second death timers within the key are very punishing so it doesn't feel good you get punished by depleting the key once you fail it you also get punished by losing crests once you fail it so right now mythic plus feels very painful but we're still doing it we're still gonna run keys and i'm really hoping gear does help that once we get into that you know 630 eye level we can look back at tens and be like oh yeah this is fine right if the goal is to gradually get us to get there then i understand then depletion is just part of the process right so so i'm curious how things line up as the week progress and i'm excited to look back at this video and go hey you know what i was wrong they didn't need to tune it we just needed to do gear and take our time and be patient i'd be happy to be proven wrong but that is yet to be seen blizzard has always struggled with tuning especially how much there is to tune in the game and with that let's then now just jump directly into the death knight the class that i've been telling you i've been doing playing quite a bit like i said i've been doing a ton of keys a ton of different things on the death knight last week the death knight actually ended at 611 item level around there anyway right and this week we are starting the week off this is before opening our vault at 618.38 now we've got a ton of upgrades usually i would kind of just split up and let you guys see a separate screen but because we've got so many upgrades i actually want to show you side by side from my bag what we got this week right so let's quickly touch base on what we did now we did the normal raid heroic raid the mythic raid and a ton of keys right so out of the raid we got a couple things we actually got a ton of trinkets so we got sikrin's endless arsenal from normal we also got the sky terrors corrosive organ as well from normal this one we upgraded and i'll explain why in a second on top of that as we were doing as when we went into silken court we ended up getting the normal weapon from silken court however when we did heroic i also got the heroic weapon so i traded the normal one off because somebody else could use it for aspect but i kept the heroic so we did get that as well from normal moving into 
to Mythic, I ended up upgrading this trinket again. So I've had the normal, the heroic, and the Mythic versions of the Foul Behemoth trinket now. And then because I was the only DK, I ended up getting the one-handers from Heroic that I started to use as Frostback. So I actually got a chance to play a little bit of Frost on the weekend. I was just practicing the rotation and doing it. And Frost is a lot of fun. So we ended up getting both one-handers from the Heroic raid. And continuing that, we did a Miss the Tier and a Scythe 10, which actually gave us a headpiece that we can actually use for our uh, Frostback because it has Haste Mastery and we have our five piece. We ended up also out of the Mythic raid, we and we killed Rashanon. We got the Mythic track one-hander from that. I was the only DK that could use it. So I'm very excited that I get to now play Frost with some decent weapons in tow. So that is the item collection that we ended up getting from raid and dungeon and all of that this week. And then of course, on top of that, because we finally got our Gilded Crest, we ended up crafting our 636 weapon. So that is done and ready to go. And we did this with the Symbiosis embellishment, the Dark Moon uh, Symbiosis embellishment. Reason is that it grants versatility um, at the cost of life. Now, DKs have such a massive health pool and, you know, we death strike so often, but I figured that that would be fine. And I want the versatility, especially in Mythic Plus. So that's why I took this one and then outside of that we did some other upgrades we did get boots out of a dungeon that we did and then we just upgraded some of the gear that we had to get it up to a decent eye level before using too many gilded crests my prim primary concern was getting my weapon crafted which is now done and that is how the death knight is looking in regards to his gear quickly jumping into our mythic plus io rating we ended last week at 2043 and we are starting this week at 2281 so we got about 240 io this week so these are the keys that gave us points and you're gonna see a trend here most of them weren't time so we've got an eight grim batol that was failed for 21 points we timed a nine era Kara, which which gave us 33 points we ended up doing a nine siege of Boralis that also gave us 59 points we did a nine dawnbreaker that was timed and i don't know why the points aren't showing up here we did an eight city of threads for 17 points and we actually went back and ran again and did a 10 city of threads for 33 points both keys were failed that is the keys that we did for io most of the other ones were either eight nines or tens but they were at a they were all failed so they didn't give us io because we were so far over but that is how this week looks so we finally have some untimed nines in the collection and a 10 now the goal would be to kind of get nines across the board timed and then start working working on tens i still think i need more gear but that is something we're going to work on over the course of the week so this week we're starting at 2281 in io and the last thing we're going to look at on the dk is we're going to take a look at his vault we're opening it in frostbeck actually this week we're kind of changing it up a bit so let's take a look at what he gets in the vault i'm kind of excited we have two mythic raid slots and we have two mythic dungeon slots so we were able to get four tens done. So let's take a look at what his vault looks like. So taking a look, we have a mythic track chest piece. This is huge. This is a massive upgrade, which is probably what I'm going to take. We have mythic track. Actually, this is an even bigger upgrade for me than the chest is. And then we have the haste first headpiece. Going into our mythic slots, we have haste mastery mythic track legs. We have the crit mastery ring. This would be fantastic for frost actually. And a massive upgrade over what I have. And then we also have a pretty useless trinket that we're not even going to consider. And these don't really matter. They are just tier one uh, delve slots at 584. So it's really between these two items here. Either I take the mythic track hands which is a great upgrade or i take the chest so the chest drops from brute mister and the hands drop from sikrin now i'm sure we're going to do sikrin a lot more but i'll probably be last in line to get it the biggest upgrade from stats is probably the chest however in regards to eye level my biggest upgrade is going to be my hands so really between the ring because my rings really do suck and the hands but in just regards to pure stat upgrade i think i'm going to go with the hands and hope that next week we can also do just as well in our vault so we take the hands and this week we end up starting with a nine necrotic wake and that brings our item level up to 619.63 to start the week all right, outside of the DK, let's quickly jump into the only other character I ran. As I, I, as I was talking about earlier, I did say I ran the warrior through a bunch of keys. I actually was hoping to get all of his keys done and at least like a five through seven. That didn't happen. So my goal is as many sevens done as possible. I ended up getting four sevens and I think my second vault will be a five or a six. The uh, warrior started at 585. I ended up going up to 591 just from running all the keys. He did get pretty lucky with some drops. So that is kind of nice. I got one of the abyss rings traded to me from Necrotic Wake. I got a couple. Of, I just used Valor Stones to upgrade my neck and my feet. And we also got a 
a shield. So yeah, so obviously he still needs a lot of gear, but he got some pieces, which is nice. So he's at 591. Let's see uh, what he gets in his slot, in his vault. I'm going to open it as prot because um, if I can get hero track, weapon, or shield, that's actually a huge upgrade. Uh, so let's take a look at what we get. We have the hero track tier shoulders. We've got the hero track tier head. And then we also got the 616 head with avoidance. That is huge. So it looks like the actual piece that we don't analyze is supposed to be our shoulders. Now, unfortunately for me, I already have the tier shoulders, which I mean is, is what I have. Uh, but I think I'm going to take the head because it is haste verse and it will be a nice upgrade over what I have. Now, obviously the shoulders are a bigger upgrade, but we're going to take the head just for the hero track piece. So we take the head, we throw it on, watch our item level go to 592.31, and we have seven necrotic wake. What is going on with this key? Oh, and some of the other things we accomplished this week, I'm going to post a uh, link down in the description below, but we ended up getting four out of eight mythic bosses down this week. So the guild is now four of eight. We're top 300 US, which is really exciting. That is one of the goals the guild kind of has is to stay within the top 500. So that is super excited, exciting. All raid boss videos. I'm going to pin it at the top of your screen right now. And down in the description, you can take a look at each of those kills. Our comms are there as well as uh, each kill is from a, my blood death Knight POV. So yeah, take a look at that. Some of these aren't very clean kills but they're kills so we'll take it and now we will be moving on to brute tister which received received massive nerfs so i'm very excited to do that this coming week but that is one of the other things we ended up accomplishing in week three of the war within and moving on let's just quickly touch base on some of the things we're going to be doing this week so, so this week the guild requires us to complete four 10 keys i'm really hoping with some of the gear upgrade i mean it's not really much i'm still only 618 but i'm hoping getting into tens is a little more reasonable it is a fortified week with a new affix for level one so I'm, as always I'm going to push Mythic Plus as best as I can specifically to get 10s done. I'd like to get at least 8 10s done to get those vault slots filled up. We'll see how that goes. We have 3 raid raid days again. We're going to do a normal skip. We're going to clear Heroic and then we're going right back into Mythic. Our goal this week is to get Brood Twister down. With the nerfs, it should be reasonable to accomplish. I'm very excited for that. And then outside of that, I want to keep playing my Warrior. I'm very curious how Warrior is going to feel when we hit 610 item level. I think it's just going to be a wicked tank to play and I've always enjoyed playing the warrior that is the other thing i'm going to do this week and then outside of that one of the things i keep doing is i continue to farm herbs and mining nodes to keep my alchemist rolling and supplying my death knight with flask files all the things i need for raid and for mythic plus i'm glad i am because they are fairly expensive and i'm able to keep up with what the dk needs at rank two so i'll continue doing that and i do also have to start doing some of the quests to finish this to finish the sojourn of each zone so i can get the rep out of that so i can get my renown up so maybe i can get some amounts that you can buy from some of the renown vendors so that is the plan for this week i hope you guys are having a fantastic week i hope week three vault has been good to you i hope you're achieving all the goals you want to in the game outside of that hit me up in the comments below let me know what's going on in your week i am going to see you guys in kazalgar or in the mythic plus dungeons until next time peace out